So we're now going to turn our attention to pretty much the final part of the Java Executor Framework. And this is something called the Java Scheduled Executor Service. And we'll talk about some of the methods it provides and some of the key interfaces and classes that are part of this particular portion of the framework. Let's start by talking about the Scheduled Executor Service Interface. So what this does is this is yet another extension of the Executor Service that can be used to schedule commands to run after a given delay and or to execute these commands periodically. So essentially, this is adding the concept of time to the executor service that we've got so far. And as you can see from the class diagram we have here on the slide, there's a number of different pieces involved in this. Here are some of the key methods that are part of the scheduled executor service interface. There's a couple of methods that are used to schedule the execution of so-called one-shot tasks that run at a given delay, and they're both called schedule. So this particular method schedules two-way callable tasks. So as you might expect, that will return a result. And then there's also a way to schedule a one-way runnable task, which does not return a result, at least not directly. The first parameter to both of these schedule methods is the time from now, from the point where the method is invoked, to delay the execution. So it's basically saying, run this task at this point in the future. Note that delay is always specified in so-called relative time, which is the time from the time when it's invoked, rather than absolute time. There are other timer mechanisms in Java that use absolute time, like the Java timer class. These methods can return values that will provide a way for clients or callers to be able to cancel and or check the execution status. You can basically think of these as sort of like uh, futures on steroids, if you will. <clears throat> In fact, you can see here that the scheduled future is implementing the future interface, and it's also implementing the delayed interface. And that allows you to learn a bit more about what's going on rather than just being able to get the values or check to see if it's been canceled or if it's done and so on. Now, if you call future get on a uh, timer that's scheduled using runnables, then in that particular case, you'll get back null because there is intended to be no return value from that. Whereas if you use one for callable, for a task that's callable, then you'll be able to get back a result from that. There's also another pair of methods that are used to schedule the execution of periodic tasks that are run after the initial delay or can also be canceled. So uh, these tasks have to be one way. Notice that they're both runnables. They don't return a result directly. The parameter that comes after the runnable command is the time to delay the first execution. That's very similar to what we saw before with schedule. And again, these delays are scheduled in relative time, not in absolute time. Then for the schedule at fixed rate method, there's a parameter that says how much time to wait between successive executions. And what's interesting about this is if the current execution is taking too long to run, the next execution will start up. So that, that can sometimes be a little bit confusing. And for that reason, there's also another method called schedule with fixed delay, which uses the delay to indicate the termination of one execution and the commencement of the next one. So in other words, however long the command takes to run, when it's done, then schedule with fixed delay will wait that amount of time before the next task is run as part of this periodic processing. So there are different ways of doing things. This this one up here is going to give you sort of more like a, a pulse, like a heartbeat that beats at a certain interval, whereas this one's going to wait until the processing is done in the previous task and then schedule the next task to run at that particular delay. These methods both also return scheduled futures that can be used to cancel or check the execution status of the commands and tasks that they're running. So that's the end of the overview of the Java Scheduled Executor Service. As you can see, it's pretty simple, but it's going to be used in a whole bunch of interesting ways in order to provide time-based operations. And we'll also, as we get a little further along in this part of the lesson, 
will motivate what you can use time-based operations for. And you'll see we have some really cool examples that apply the scheduled executor service and time-based operations to improve our memoizer, which we've been looking at earlier as a basically a cache to cache long running operations. And we're gonna use the timing mechanisms available in the scheduled executor service in order to be able to periodically purge elements in a memoizer that haven't been accessed in a while. 